Chemistry. Language. Do you like them? I do. What if we were to combine the two? That's where elements.vanderkrog.net comes in. It's a website which lists the names of every element in all 94 languages. 94 languages? And gives some info about their etymologies. It's an interesting website, but it leaves something to be desired. For one thing, it makes some baffling choices about which languages, like dropping major world languages like Igbo, Tatar, and Urdu, while including incredibly obscure minority languages like Moksha, Quechua, and Sesotho. But more importantly, it only includes the etymology of like one or two languages, and that's a crying shame. So today, we're going to be going over the names of every element in every language. <gasps> that's the name of the video! Much like the entire universe, this video is going to start with hydrogen. There are basically two schools of thought, in hydrogen, but also for most of the elements, loanwords and calcs. Loanwording is when you steal another language's word for something, like when we stole the word calc from French, and calcing is when you take the literal translation of another language's word and use it to mean the same thing as that language, like when we calc the word loanword from German. These languages have loaned the word hydrogen into their own language, and their word for hydrogen is just hydrogen, or whatever you call it. These calcing languages, whose word for hydrogen literally translates into makes water or makes up water, are displayed here. And finally, the most interesting ones, the others, which is why I made this video. Every language that uses Chinese characters, such as the Mandarin Qing, uses this character, which means air that is light. The Japanese suiso directly translates into water material, but the Korean suso doesn't mean anything in Korean. It's just a loan word, but from Japanese instead of English. In a similar vein, Chuvash and Uzbek are Turkic languages, but they still use the Slavic word vodorod as a loan from Russian. Helium is the sun element, and it was discovered much later, so it should come as no surprise that all of these languages just use the exact word helium leaving only two languages, which you're going to want to remember. And go watch my video on diacritics, because they both use Macrons. Maori is an indigenous language spoken in New Zealand, and Nahuatl is an indigenous language spoken in Mexico. Nahuatl, not wanting to associate with the heathen Greek god Helios, named at Tornatisho, after the sun god Tornatish, and Maori, with flagrant disregard for common practice, named it Haumama, meaning light gas, making it the same as the Chinese word for hydrogen. Everyone uses the word lithium. It's just that simple. Beryllium is also almost entirely unified, with two exceptions. Can you guess who? The Maori is Konuuku, and the Nahuatl is Iztaktlaltepoztli. The good news is that Konu and Tepoztli both just mean metal, so I only have one part to look up. Well, technically it never said that konu means metal, but it said that konu kore means non-metal, and that kore means non, so... Istak means white, and tlau means earth, so white earth metal, and uku means clay, so clay metal, which makes it the same as the Polish word for aluminum. Did I already say Maori has a disregard for common practice? Boron. Well, 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 if it isn't our two least favorite fellows. Nahuatl is Shakoi's title, and Maori is Putifa. I don't mean to brag or anything, but I pretty much handled it. Pu is from Pumotu, element, and Tifa means black, at least I think so. What do I mean by that? I'm so glad you ask. Maori is a Malayo-Polynesian language, which means it does something fun called co-lexification, which essentially means every word has like five different meanings. Example, Tifa can also mean conspicuous, damaged, to ask for allies in a war, particularly by hiding a message in a song, a bald spot, the features left by a landslide, a scratch, or the iris of the eye. However, since the shako of Nahuatl means dark or swarthy, I'm going to air with that meaning. And Iztlal is salt, so black element and dark salt. Well, the gents aren't alone anymore. Nearly half of the languages on this list calced carbon as the stuff that makes up coal. The only notable ones are the same as in hydrogen, where Chuvash and Uzbek stole Russia's and Korean stole Japan's. Nitrogen, you might expect to be in the same boat as hydrogen and carbon, but it has a secret. You see, after the English took the French's name of nitrogen, they decided they wanted their own name. The basic idea is that oxygen is the part of the air you can breathe, and nitrogen is the part you can't, so their new name was azot, meaning without life. These are the languages which use nitrogen, and these are the ones which use azot. The Germanic languages, as well as Japanese, which calcs from Dutch when it can, use something equivalent to makes choking or suffocation. The same origin is used in Hebrew by coincidence. Czech, Slovak, Croatian, and Slovenian all use a word that's derived from soul. 
with an implication that there's a connection to a death or a lack of life. So that can be considered a calc of azote. Quechua, interestingly, is actually a calc of nitrogen using the word culpa for saltpeter. Finally, Latvian sla peklis comes from thirst. Chinese dan means diluting gas. Korean is loaned from Japanese. Nahuatl ehe katahuil titi means clear or transparent gas. And I believe Maori means uncooked or raw air. The Kashubian word for it is tohen. I was unable to find an etymology for this, and this certainly won't be the last time so. Oxygen is nice. These languages call it oxygen, and these call it the stuff that makes up acid. Polish and Lithuanian, and Lithuanian's little brother Samogedian, use a word related to burning, which makes sense because burning is oxidation. Chinese and Maori use a word that ultimately references oxygen as being the air that you can breathe. Uzbek steals the Russian kislorod, Nahuatl drops all modifiers and just calls it air, and Georgian takes the most interesting route, referring to oxygen's presence in rust. Korean, of course, loans from Japanese. The Kazakh word for oxygen is otek or otegi. I couldn't find an etymology for this, but it's not impossible to imagine oxygen somehow making its way to otegin and otek. Quechua also uses muksi chap. The chak is the same ending used in carbon, nitrogen, and hydrogen, but all I could find for muxi is a neologism, which means oxide. Again, not impossible to imagine oxy becoming muxi, but very unlikely, especially considering nasals hardly ever appear and spontaneously, especially in an onset position. Florine in English means to flow, but it has an alternative, thor, meaning destruction. The subtle differences between flor and flor have been reduced to just the second letter, and while these countries use flor, these use flor. Maori, being Maori, calls it yellow gas. Neon is Greek for new, and yanquilia is nahuatl for new, and kura is Maori for red. Sodium is the second of four elements, where there are two different names used worldwide, and everyone picks from either barrel to loan word. Its two names are sodium from soda and natrium from natron. These languages use sodium, and these use natrium. One language uses neither. You'll never guess which one it is. Magnesium is universally loaned because it's named after a place, but the Western Slavic languages sort of had a craze in the late 18th century where they came up with their own unique names for these elements, so Czech and Slovak use a word derived from bitter. Maori calls it foreign metal, so I guess you can calc a place name, and Quechua uses this term, Kunta Kailai. Eli means metal, and junta means magnesium oxide, a naturally occurring chemical that goes by a variety of names in English. Aluminum, or aluminium, is universally referred to as just aluminum. Nobody bothered to look up the Latin bitter salt to calc that, but Czech and Slovak came up with clay. Kaolin, the biggest component of clay, contains aluminum, which is why clay also makes up the chaku of the Quechua chaku eli. It's about time Mongolian makes an appearance, handing out light, white. Maori calls it the soft metal, and Kurdish uses the word bafun, or bafun, or fafun, or fafun, depending on which dialect you speak. I have no idea what could have caused this. Silicon was a real birch. They won't let me say <laughs> These languages use silicon. This, these languages calc the original meaning of silex as flint. These languages are ultimately from a diminutive of rock. These languages have an existing word for the mineral silicon dioxide, and the word for silicon is based on that. These words all loan from the Russian kremnik rather than the Latin silex. And finally, we get to the others. I spent the longest on silicon by far out of any element. Japanese uses keiso, the so meaning element, and the ke was originally part of keido, the do meaning earth, and the ke is loaned from the Dutch kearda, which follows the diminutive of stone pattern. The Chinese gui, or guai, is then loaned from that Japanese, and the Korean gyuso is loaned from that. Nahuatl uses tekpatli, which means an herb whose juice gets rid of the harshness in the chest and is a singular remedy for palpitations and for blood in the bowels, and from the same root is made a very good lime for catching silly little birds. What? The good news is that it is also the absolutive declension of tekpatl, which refers to a flint knife, so we can throw it in with the flint bros, and that leaves one language. The Muksha word for silicon is atayem, written like this. Which is intriguing, because that is not how you write atayem in Cyrillic. So which is it? Is it ktayem or atayem? Well, that particular answer took me about two weeks to find out. I'll have a full video on the subject out later, but suffice it to say that the Muksha word is not ktayem or atayem, it is tulgev.
which literally translates to Firestone and makes it another flint bro. Phosphorus, the light bringer itself. Almost every language just uses phosphorus, but the three amigos of Chinese, Japanese, and Korean all use lean. Why? Which one came first? Who loaned from who? Let's get into it. The Chinese came first. This Hansa, Lin, existed since the Shang Dynasty. The part at the top used to be a corpse surrounded by wills of whist, but people kept drawing it weird, so now it looks like it says rice, so they made a new version of it with fire off to the side, and that's what the Japanese got, but when Chinese made it into an element, they added a rock off to the side in keeping with other elements, then Korean loaned it. Maori strikes back with element that is made out of poo and stars, and Moksha makes a triumphant return with palikandur. So far, I understand this. It means burning sulfur. But we'll see how much sense sulfur makes. It makes no sense! I don't know where kandur came from. These languages use the word sulfur straight from the Latin's mouth. Note that this doesn't include the Romance languages who inherited it from Latin rather than loaning it. A surprising number of languages just have pre-existing words they use to refer to sulfur. As previously stated, I have no idea for the etymology of Muksha, as well as Hungarian, Komi, Mandarin Chinese, and Sesotho, but I might as well assume they're in the same boat. Those who don't have their own word might have just taken another language's word, considering how many there are. The Baltic languages loaned from Slavic, Slovene, Estonian, and Voro loaned from German, Greek loaned from Ancient Greek, Kurdish, Azerbaijani, Chuvash, Kazakh, Kyrgyz, Mongolian, Turkish, Uyghur, Uzbek, and Georgian all loaned from Persian, Hebrew and Arabic loaned from Aramaic, and Maltese loaned from Arabic, Vietnamese and Korean loaned from Chinese, Thai, Malayalam, and Tamil loaned from Sanskrit, and Cebuano, Quechua, and Basque loaned from Spanish. Icelandic uses the term brennestein, which you may notice is a cognate with brimstone, both of which mean burning stone, making them the same as the moksha word for silicon. Nahuatl is gun earth or gunpowder, and I would love to point out that the Nahuatl for gun is fire trumpet, and finally Japanese is hot water bubble, referring to the bubbles of sulfurous gas released from hot springs. Chlorine is again everyone, although Uyghur includes the Russian loan word gas. More evidence for the Sinaitic Polynesian hypothesis comes from both Maori and Mandarin using green gas. Japanese again counts a Dutch word, this time it's salt stuff. And Korean dutifully loans from Japanese. And for the second time, there are no exceptions to everyone uses argon. That is, unfortunately, all we have time for this week. Stay tuned for part two next week. And if you have any more suggestions for videos, please tell me because I'm running out of ideas.